Hi everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews. Welcome to a lovely dreary day in the UK. Um, sun's gone gone down, we haven't got the sun anymore. Um, so it's a bit cold, a bit chilly, hence the big coats. But uh, we're full of beans and keen to provide you with the next video in the series on the, on the Ferrari 458. And today we're going to talk to you about the mid-engine Ferrari V8. From the inception, so the models where the V8 began, and then to the progressing up to the 458. So the V8 started in the 308, in the Ferrari 308. It started, it was, it was first inception was actually transverse. It wasn't longitudinal. It's a transverse V8 engine introduced in the Ferrari 308. Now, a lot of people think that it was introduced in the Dino, in the Dino 206. Ferrari produced, well, Ferrari produced, more on that in a minute, um, the Dino 206 and the 246 GT. Now, it was actually, there was two points there that I can raise about that. Number one, it wasn't actually V8, it was a V6. So the V8 was never actually introduced in the 206 and 246. There were different derivatives of the Dino where the Ferrari was introduced, but it wasn't in those models, which is the Dino that we know and we love. And the other part is, of course, is that Dino wasn't Ferrari. Dino was, its, was a brand in itself. Enzo created the Dino brand to commemorate his son's death and to actually celebrate his, his, son's, his son's life, if you like. Um, and also because he wasn't happy introducing a V6 into a Ferrari branded car. Um, so he actually created the Dino brand. And the Dino is actually a separate brand, it isn't Ferrari. It was created and produced by Ferrari, but it wasn't actually Ferrari. It was a separate brand that ran in parallel to Ferrari and transitioned across at one stage. More on that in a minute. So the first model was the 308. Now the 308 model was released in 1973. Actually it was named as the 308 GT and it was actually under the Dino brand. Now it transitioned across to the Ferrari brand in 1976. So you could argue that the first mid-engined V8 Ferrari was produced in 1976 because the Dino wasn't the Ferrari brand. Now the, the, the 308 introduced the flat plane crank into the engine. For those who don't understand what the flat plane crank is, um, in effect it means that the journal, if you led the crank down, apart from obviously the each end bearing section, uh, the actual flat plane crank, the actual journals are flat. Um, it, it, the flat plane crank is important because it produces that Ferrari howl, it, or it helps to produce that Ferrari howl and that sound is ever so significant to Ferrari V8s. And that was the introduction of the flat frame crank, which actually is still evident now, it's still introduced and still carries forward in the V8 engines. Now the naming convention of the Ferraris was introduced in the, in the 308 um, to begin with. Um, it did actually change later on, but it, it stayed with, with the Ferrari uh, model names, model numbers, it stayed with the model names for a while. So the 308, means and references 3.0 so it's actually a 2.9 um, litre engine but actually they called it the 3.0 and of course it was a V8 hence the 8 so 308 3.0 engine litre and 8 the V8 so to, so just to just to close that one out there the 308 was actually firstly a Dino and then it transitioned across from a Dino um, to in 1976 to actually rebranded re as a proper Ferrari in 1976 3, three litre and was a V8, hence the 308, 3 litre and a V8. Now, subsequent to the 308 was the 328. The 328 pretty much was just an upgraded 308. The 328 had an, had an uplift, a slight uplift in performance, had a revised engine and had the same styling, same bodywork as the actual 308. Now the, now the 328, again, naming convention applies. It went up to a 3.2 litre and obviously 3.8 a V8 for the for the for the eight in the 3.28. 
so 3.2 litre and the V8, hence the naming convention 328. The 328 was up to 270 brake horsepower, as I said it had a revised V8 engine in the 328, still had the flat plane crank which stayed as say with all the models going forward, um, and the name of convention kept with the 3.2 litre and the V8, hence the 3 and the 2 and the 8 in the model name. And 348 came after the 328. The 348 was quite a, quite a transition from the 328. People will, will, will re, um, people will remember or be nostalgic for the 348 because of its very direct steering. It's very pointy on the steering, very direct. So as one of the, one of the key um, key positives of the 348 was in, it was its steering. There are lots of other issues with the 348 or um, they, they've been pretty much taken on board now and accepted and the 348's been, been, has a lot more love for it now but back in the day it was pretty much disliked or disliked because mostly I, I think because of the model that came after it, 355. Now the 348 keeping the same name and convention had the 3.4 litre and obviously it was a V8 and it kept the same flat plane crank design and it was 316 brake horsepower so it was up from 270 brake horsepower to 316 brake horsepower so quite an advancement and quite an improvement on the actual engine capability there and as I said the 348 had quite direct steering that was the main uh, feature that the 348 was known for. Now downstream or upstream whichever way you want to look at it from the 348 was of course the historically renowned 355 and the 355 changed the naming convention. The 355 was a massive improvement on the 348. It was in effect one of those big major steps that Ferrari makes in their models and um, when they really up the game. So the 355 was of course quite a substantial design change to the 348. Um, still flat plane crank but it had that phenomenal engine in there, that engine that howls up to 8,500 8 RPM. Now the 355 naming convention relates to 3.5 for 3.5 litre but the 5 at the end relates to the innovative feature of the 355 which had which meant that it had 5 valves per cylinder. Now the extra 5 fifth valve was actually an additional inlet valve. The brake horsepower on the 355 was upped to 385. So it was up for, from the 348's brake horsepower 316 to 385 and of course that glorious howl that wailed upwards of around 6,000 RPM to 8,500 RPM where it redlined. The 355 obviously was one of the substantial models in the Ferrari lineup and is still revered today. Um, 355 is well sought after. I myself was very keen on purchasing a 355, but the maintenance struggles, <laughs> if you like to call it that, um, uh, you know, just just put it out of the of the put it out of the option list for me, and hence why I chose the 458. Downstream from the 355 is the 360. Again, same naming convention with the 355, obviously not with the valve side of things. Um, 36 meaning 3.6 litre and the performance was up to 400 brake horsepower in the 360. Again, a longitudinal mounted engine, so no longer transverse engine like it was in the 328 and still a flat plane crank. The 360 introduced the new series of model ranges or enhanced models that came with some of the models in the introduction of the 360 Challenge Stradell. Now the Challenge Stradell was a lightened race road version of the 360 um, and it had an additional 25 brake horsepower. Now 25 brake horsepower doesn't seem a lot so it took up to around 425 brake horsepower. Doesn't seem a lot but the car was substantially lightened and substantially modified for the track um, which substantially enhanced its performance so faster changing gears obviously higher um, more performant engine um, a better revving as well I think the, the I think the flywheel was lightened as well uh, but still the same design of engine as it was in the 355 but no longer the same characteristics of the 355. The 355 was released in 1994 and the free and the 360 was released in 1999. So downstream from the 360 is of course the 430. The 430 was released in 2004 and had 490 brake horsepower. Now again the same as with the 360 Challenge Stradal, there was an enhanced road racer version of the 430 produced and this was called the Scuderia. The Scuderia, again a lightened version similar to the 360's Challenge Stradale, the Scuderia um, was a lightened version of the 430 road vehicle, well it was the, the, the 430 Scuderia was a road vehicle, vehicle but it was a road racer, 
and it was upped in brake horsepower from 490 to 503, around 503, 505 brake horsepower. Also the 430 changed with the engine design, it's a substantial engine, engine design change, an all new engine produced for the 430 and it, um, it broke its, its lineage with the Dino designed engines from the 308 forward. So it was quite a substantial change. It was an all new engine design, no longer um, aligning with the actual Dino variant of the V8, but still with a flat plane crank. There was also an additional model that was produced, um, a variant of the Scuderia, and it was called the 430 Scuderia 16M. And this was in effect, um, a drop head version, so it was an open top version of the Scuderia. Now, after the 430, of course, came the 458. Now, the 458 was released in 2009 and progressed on to 2015 with all its different model types. Now, the standard models of the 458, the Italia and the Spider, produced 562 brake horsepower and they ref to that wacky red line of 9000, which of course helped to produce the whale that you get with a 458. There's two special models that were produced also for the 458. There's a Speciale, which again is lightened, more um, enhanced version, and there's the Aperta. The Speciale, I believe, was produced from 2013 to 2015, and the Aperta was produced from 2014 to 2015. The Speciale upped the performance from 562 brake horse, brake horsepower of the Italia and the, and the Spider to 596 brake horsepower. So it's quite a substantial improvement in performance. Of course, the Speciale was a lightened version, more lightened version, much in the same line as the Scuderia and the Challenge, Challenge Stradale. So we've, um, so we've provided the history there of the flat plane cranked mid-engine V8. We've progressed from the inception of the engine in the 308 up to the 328 and then up to the 348 and from the 348 to the 355 from the 355 to the 360 from the 360 foot to the 430 and from the 430 ending on the 458 now of course that isn't where the v8 the naturally aspirated v8 ends it's progressed onwards from there but it's no longer naturally aspirated from the aperta onwards from sorry after the aperta the, the V8 engine is no longer naturally aspirated. So again, if you've got a 458 Aperta, you've got a very rare car because you've got the last model naturally aspirated Ferrari V8, mid-engine V8. Downstream the models after that, of course the 488 turbocharged, the F8 turbocharged, and the later downstream models are enhanced with electric electric engines that are, that are enhanced with electrical support um, the whole field is changing um, hence one of the major reasons why I purchased a 458 the last of the naturally aspirated V8 engines mid-engine V8s of the Ferrari so hope you enjoyed this video if you have then please make sure you you click that like button please it's very important for the good old YouTube algorithms we're looking to in we're looking to grow the channel this year we want to get at least 1,000 subscribers this year so that's our real key focus so please help us in that by subscribing if you're not subscribed already so please engage with the channel as much as you can I always answer all the comments so if you drop a comment in there and I'll get back to you. If you want anything particularly featured or a video progressed on anything in particular, um, referencing horology and obviously supercars slash um, normal cars, then please let me know and I'll try and make it happen. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.